10 years ago, meditation was not mainstream. Meditation was weird. You couldn't talk about spiritual awakening without people thinking you were fucking crazy. What's it gonna be like 10 years from now? And what role do you have in that becoming? What, what do you know that if the world knew you knew, they would think you're fucking crazy? That 10 years from now, you'll know was so necessary for the integration. Boom, what's up everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakian. We are still at Consciousness Hacking's Awakened Future Summit. We are now gonna be talking to Robin Arnott. Hello. Hi. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Really Pleasure appreciate to be here. it. Thank you. Very pumped. You are the CEO of Andromeda Entertainment, which does video games for transformation. Mm -hmm. And go ahead and teach us about who you are and what you represent. Oh, sure. Who we'll teach you about who I am and what I represent. Um, Boy, that's a big one. I'll, I'll, I'll keep it straight. Uh, so I'm, uh, a, I, I've been a video game designer for the last 10 years or so. Uh, I've been deeply in the independent video games world. So I worked on the game Antichamber, Stanley Parable as a sound designer. And what I loved about being a sound designer was um, we're visual thinkers, which means that musicians and sound designers can sneak right past the part of you that thinks and kind of grab you by the back of your mind. Mm -hmm. and, and I loved, back when I was doing sound design for video games, I loved how I could, I could just uh, warp a person's reality and help them feel different or more or whatever. Um, so that was kind of the beginning of my career in experiences. And after my first oneness experience, a game design flashed into my head, which uh, became Sound Self. And after years of developing Sound Self, um, I'm meeting the most incredible people because I, I, it can feel very alone, or I felt very alone for a long time, you know, making this, this piece of, this interactive experience that was designed directly to, to shift your state of consciousness. And I was surrounded by brilliant people. And I mean, the independent game scene is full of incredibly brilliant artists. I don't know if you're a gamer, but just like, yeah, independent game scene is... It's whoo! on fire, and yeah. it's been on fire for about a decade, and those are my friends, you know? So I've, I've had the incredible privilege of being surrounded by a, a huge amount of artistic genius. Um, and, um, but I was trying to do something different, you know? I wasn't trying to tell a story. I wasn't trying to provoke an emotional response. I wasn't trying to stimulate any sort of a mental response. I was trying to bypass all of that and, and help use a video game to help a person feel what they are. Mm. And as I started doing that, at first feeling very alone, I started encountering more and more people thinking about not just game design, but music and art in general in this transformative way. I think many of us inspired by psychedelics, hence here at the Awakened Future Summit. Um, I think many of us inspired by meditation, which has downright become mainstream in the last 10 years. It wasn't 10 years ago. Think about that. Um, and I was frustrated because I, I realized like I needed um, like a, a, a big brother. I needed a company that could help bring SoundSelf to market, given that SoundSelf was so different from what people expect from video games. It needed a very different treatment. Um, and as with the you know, uh, origin story of so many companies, just that not being out there, there was an opportunity to step up and create it. And so I took a break from developing SoundSelf for about a year to instead develop the business entity that could help projects like SoundSelf get out into the market. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So SoundSelf's our second game. We we're also working on a dance experience. Uh, that's our first game, which is Audio Trip. And we're working on finding the next tier of titles for us to work with to help flesh out the transformational experience market. Because once you've had once you have an experience that shakes you out of your narrative, there's nothing like it. I don't see people wanting to go back to, you know, like distraction experiences or what have you, even the most beautiful distraction experiences. Or like, like you, you know this, once you start meditating or taking psychedelics or so on, like it is a spiritual path and you get onto the spiritual path. And I don't know anybody who gets onto that path and then <laughs> gets bored of it, right? So, I think that this is going to be a, a, a tremendously potent market. Mm -hmm. um, and we're just seeing the beginnings of it right now. Damn, I want you to speak to how when we 
are involved in a video game that there's so many pieces to the video game that we're typically not very aware of and yeah. similar to when we dine at a restaurant and that we're not usually getting behind the eyes of the chef and the busser and the waiters and waitresses and very the intentionally and it, it, yeah, yeah yeah so the more that we can uh, intentionally understand the puzzle pieces of the video game designers and developers, the audio engineers, all that type of stuff, um, the more we can uh, potentially have a better understanding of exactly what yeah, the intention of even the game is. And so why don't you teach us about that first, there's so many cool things that you said and we'll try and break them down as you go, but that first part, you your awareness has been expanded to the point where you know that with audio, you can potentially bypass some of this initial processing that we have when we're playing a game uh -huh. and you can transform people's state. So speak to that a little bit. Sure. Let me find it. Musicians know this. Politicians know this. Uh, anybody who, so we, we, we're, we, we have a mind, of course, and um, can I just assume your audience understands like the difference between who they are and the mind, or should I like explain that a little bit? Explain that a little bit. Okay, so you know we, we have our mind, which creates differences between things and says this is this and that is that, and here's how I relate to this, and here's how I relate to that, and here's how these things relate to each other, and creates these really beautiful intricate maps. And um, so much, so many of us are um, identified with the mind, and we don't realize until our mind stops for a moment that that's not what we are that we're something much, much bigger. Um, I don't know to what degree that that is um, cultural versus to what degree it's uh, developmental, um, but but it's there. Uh, what is that that you're referencing that's bigger than the mind? Oh man, you know, it has, uh, well the mind is the thing that does the naming. So I, 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 the thing that's bigger than the thing that does the naming can't be named, although we try to name it. Is that the unity or yeah, the God? Yeah, or God, or, source, yeah, yeah, yeah. unity, those are great names. Um, okay. uh, I like silly names as well. Um, uh, I, used to, I used to just call it Dr. Banana Hat because <laughs> it's totally ridiculous. And, <laughs> but um, um, it's just, you know, uh, silence or you, you can kind of describe these things, but you're not describing, uh, there, there's the, um, I forget the neti neti meditation. Or, or not that, not that, not that, because of course as soon as you, ah, it's silence, mm. but it's also the, you know, there's no, I, unfortunately I can't, there are people who do an incredible job pointing at the stillness, and, and sometimes I can do that, but most of the time not, so, um, but I, ca I can speak to, once, once we begin to recognize we're more than the mind, and recognize everyone else is more than the mind, then we realize we don't have to interface mind to mind mm. anymore. Um, How do we interface then? Uh, soul to soul, or we we just I mean even emotionally when we're relating to one another on an emotional level that that transcends our words, you know, uh, through things like the eye gazings. Yeah, the things like eye gazings, or just sharing presence with one uh, another. Sharing presence yeah. without words. Yeah, I yeah. love being just being in silence yeah. with one another. With another one another, yeah, yeah. yeah. Listening Good to stuff. music together, we get we get taken on a, a journey together, mm -hmm. as as you and I did at the journey this morning mm -hmm. that East Forest did. As a designer, um, if we think about how we relate to a person's mind we're really limited in how we can affect them. And not only that, but we are necessarily interfacing with the gatekeeper to that mm -hmm. person's experience. Mm -hmm. And there's some merit to that because um, if I want to convince you of something, you can make an argument that it's ethical to go through the mind because um, maybe it's not ethical for me to bypass your rational systems and just plant an idea emotionally, although there are people who can do that. Um, but when you're trying to give somebody a transformative experience, the gatekeeper is um, a nuisance. Um, mm. And those of us working in media, in video games or music, the, the gatekeeper is, you know, if you're listening to a piece of music, I don't know, I, 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 can, I can feel my gatekeeper on when the piece of music is playing. Sometimes if I'm getting critical about a piece of music or if I'm like, what did the musician think? You know, it's just like, but mm -hmm. that, that noise is, is not the thing that sweeps you up. And it's the same when you're watching a movie, playing a video game, 
listening, oh, here's a great example, like listening to, for, for um, those in your audience who are religious, or, you know, that's something we, we lose in the secular world is the sermon. Um, oh. A sermon is, is spoken word that passes through or around the mind and into, into something about the soul that just recognizes what's being said. Very interesting. Yeah. Okay, okay. I love <laughs> the word gatekeeper is so funny. Yeah, because it's almost as though the uh, ability for us to work, build a, build a stronger commun commun com this communion with the gatekeeper, a stronger relationship with it, because we, we don't necessarily want uh, a, potentially a, a, a gatekeeper that is too vigilant, a gatekeeper that's too loose, mm -hmm. um, but... Yeah, the uh, gatekeeper serves a purpose. It serves a purpose for identifying what's salient and pursuing that, maybe. This is this, who this to is trust who not to trust. trust trust not trust. There's so much, so many things here. Um, but I want you're you're starting to hint at this. How does one then figure out how to embed something like a music yeah. that can get past like a sermon, like you said? Yeah, yeah. I love that question, and I, it's um, I'll do my best to answer you. But to me, it's um, so. Here's why I like working with artists. Um, I like working with artists because artists, um, the good artists, are always creating from a place of inspiration. And if you ask them, what were you trying to do with this or that, they might be able to come up with an answer, but they're probably making it up, right? They're just, they're, they're just moving through them. So there's, there's a, a kind of divine inspiration that happens and moves through the skill of the artist to, to create something. So it's not created by the mind, although the mind can be enlisted as a servant in the creation of it. Um, versus creating something like, like we've noticed that uh, 20 to 24 year old males are looking for things that are uh, like Call of Duty, but like this. And so we're gonna create a, you know, going from either market strategy or from science or from any of these things and coming down in like, like, like using the design process to answer a question instead of using the divine design process, divine process, did you hear me skip? I heard yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But using the design process to kind of uh, uh, work on an inquiry or something like that, you know? They're very different ways of approaching things. I forget your question now. There was a, you, you described this as a channeling through one uh, into the world ver yeah, versus a... Well, um, remind me of your question. The question, like, the question um, is that there's there's potentially a process that has yet to be identified right. well that can do that. That's that's right. Bypassing I gatekeeper. I, yeah, I remember that. Okay, so it is it's a subtle and kind of mysterious process, but I'll, I'll do my best to describe it. Um, it has something to do with so each of us in our core, um, as I meet you. As we meet each other through our eyes and through that, through our identities, and as I'm speaking to you, mind to mind, gatekeeper to gatekeeper, we're meeting the place where we're separate, where we're different. Which means that uh, this is a really great and exciting place to communicate ideas, right? Because when you feel the difference between ideas and you feel that tension, that's exciting. Um, but there's another way in, which is instead of, if I feel deep into myself, to feel that which is channeling through, mm. it's something that is, it comes from a more universal place. And so there's a way that if I put my mental capacities in, in, in service to that or my skill in service to that, I'm, I'm executing something and creating something which is from a place that's more expansive and more wise than the mind is, that is more recognizable and more intimate even. So one could say that there are the, the minds that are here together, yeah. and then there's the. I think mind is necessarily oppositional. Oh, is n is necessary. I think it is. I'm just. I just. Oh. I'm just. Yeah, I've not yeah. thought about that before, but that's just kind of. Yeah, yeah, but then there is this other potential of a deeper, from some sort of a spiritual, emotional, transcendent uh, vibe between the between people that if you can potentially relay a message from that area to the others, area like that. Uh -huh. then, and for, and for yeah. while, while we're all habitually identified with the mind, what that means doing is attending to the moment of inspiration and serving that, and attending to um, intuition as it arises and serving that. Um, 
especially when, I was about to say even when, but actually especially when it doesn't make sense and especially when you don't understand it. Um, and then you've turned your mind into something that is in service of, uh, I've run out of words, but in service of the mystery or in service of, of that which wants to happen that can't be articulated mm. with, with the limited mind, something like that. Mm -hmm. So then, okay, delivering music from soul to souls. Yeah. Music yeah. or art or, or design. Art. Yeah, yeah from soul to souls, that's okay. good. Okay, so then teach us, so now this is what you're fascinated with. Yeah. And you're actually, so, so is this right that Andromeda Entertainment is making it uh, easier for people to do this process? Well, well we're, a, we're a publishing company or an agency. So we're connecting with the artists that are um, working in this space, and by this space I mean transformative interactive art, mm -hmm. um, and connecting those into the, the emerging market for those experiences. So, yes. you know, like, like Burning Man has been such a cultural sensation this last 20, 30 years and has had a huge impact on, on our culture. And, and I see so many industries emerging that are ins inspired by Burning Man or by, yeah. you know, just this, or this raw kind of um, sensational experience, sensational, sensational. Um, it, it, with the senses, senses. Um, so um, cannabis lounges, uh, whatever the modern church is, whatever the the place we come together to to worship and and be in and relate to spirit in community, whatever that is, and that's something that's just kind of emerging, you know. So whatever that is, um, I, I want to connect these artists, including myself with Sound Self, but not just me, you know to that and use these things together to kind of help help it come into being. Okay. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. So so walk us through um, walk us through examples of you know even before we get to the um, people that you engage with through um, Andromeda to to um, do the the next gen of interactive art um, for the soul to soul. Let's talk about um, let's talk about sound self. Let's talk oh, about sure. what, you, what you've built yeah, in this space. Yeah, great, thank you. Um, sound self came to me, uh, I had my first oneness experience on LSD, which was a little bit of a shocker, um, as it tends to be. <laughs> um, just like, oh, I didn't know that. That's, uh, that's interesting, I don't know what to do with this information. <laughs> Said the mind afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, it was sometime after that when I was just pondering a, a sort of game design space I'd been thinking about when my oneness experience came to me and I realized I it didn't just happen. I would kind of followed a path into it. And for me that path had a lot to do with voice because I was on LSD and I was in a space at Burning Man and began toning just to feel myself grounded. And as I began toning, the music in that very moment filled with voices that happened to harmonize with my voice. And I, in that moment, for the first time, I felt with such clarity that I'm not just this voice or just this body. And, and I felt the sense of agency that I usually identify with and that seems to be the, kind of the core of causation in my being as just like one other thing that's happening. And, um, and, but that was a path that I kind of was led down or walked down and that, that path could be, um, I could create a design, a system that would walk other people down that path. And for me it was voice, and so it is with sound self. Sound self starts with your voice. Okay. And you use your voice in long tones, mm. like ah, okay. As you tone, just the world shifts and dance and moves around you. You feel it responding to you, and it starts harmonizing with you and all, as well. It's flashing at you, so I'm giving you all these abstract geometries. Oh. So you can't, your mind has nothing to settle on and you're constantly toning, which slows your breathing down. And by the way, everything, all my explanation for why it works are, is, are things that, that came years afterwards. Because what, it came to me as an inspiration, yeah, yeah. you know? That's, That's just like this. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. and so, so it's, and this is what I mean, That's like great. the correct way, it has to come from inspiration. And then if you want to figure, you can't start with why 
I, I, or I think it's that's the incorrect order of operations, is to start from why and then build inspiration. You know, you have to start with the inspiration and then you can figure out why <laughs> later on. Um, I think that's how good art is made. Um, but I might be full of shit. <laughs> so as you're doing that, as you're toning, and, and the voice is in this really precious place where it's embodied and you feel it, but it's also out here and you hear it, so it's already on the boundary between where you perceive self and other to be. Mm -hmm. and, and we see the world respond to our voice and with our voice all the time, so there's, there's already something magic in voice, it's just we're so used to it that we don't pay attention to it. But once you change the context a little bit and overwhelm the senses, suddenly you notice something you didn't before. And in this iteration of the software, you notice it in a way that that's not like, ah, like, like a psychedelic can be. Like my psychedelic first oneness experience was, it was very much a revelation, wow, and then uh, closing down and, and integration. And this one's more, it's more subtle, you know? But it is authentically doing what a ketamine does or what LSD does or even what DMT does, um, not in the same way. But it is bringing the mind into silence so that awareness can feel what it is. And through my long ah, uh, uh -huh. I'm bringing my mind into silence. It, it's partly that, and it's also partly the, the visual stimulation, and it's also partly the... Um, this is very important. You said that there's no... It's abstract totally geometrical abstract. shapes, yeah. which make it so that the mind the can't mind say nothing square, to, circle, exactly. triangle. I can't label it. <coughs> exactly, because that's what mind does. Mind labels. So when you give the mind some... Like, say, there's nothing here to label. It's changing too fast to label. It's it, changing you know? too fast. And so my... Uh, ah, oh, yes. My, my changes cause uh, the abstract geometry to change as well. Mm -hmm. So then I'm, this game is played in a virtual, in virtual reality, in a virtual reality yeah. space. And then available across uh, also? It will be, yeah. It'll okay. be available on Oculus and on Vive and on PS4, PSVR, mm -hmm. and we're working on other implementations of it. Um, because I think like these sorts of transformative technologies the place to experience them is not going to be necessarily just in the living room, it's going to be in community together or in cannabis lounges or something, you know, the, 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 the most magical places to experience these are when, when we can somehow build a ritual around them. So I'm thinking beyond sound self and into this as a whole genre, they're hungry for more than just like the, the casual engagement of, of a video game. They're hungry to be treated as ceremony. Which, and then what's the economic infrastructure of that ceremony look like? I don't know the answers, mm -hmm. but I'm uh, paying close attention. Okay, so then your, your career in the last 10 years of doing things like um, video game design and audio engineering is synthesizing its, its way into a deeper spiritual practice mm -hmm. and you want to deliver the spiritual um, practice to others through the mediums which you've gained experience in your 10 years and which are such a medium that already attract people like video games like VR okay and sound self is was the first or was there one you said before sound self was my is an experience I've been designing for eight years but as okay. a publisher Andromeda Entertainment it's our second title is there a second title? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the first title again was? It's called Audio Trip and it's a Audio, dance experience. Audio Trip Dance Experience. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And in this one they are an audio trip? Oh, an audio trip. Audio trip say uh, you, you dance, you move your body. It's, it's less psychedelically inclined and it's more just about getting into your body and feeling alive and feeling in flow. Yeah, yeah that's great. Oh, uh-huh. Yeah, I'm just always... There's so many uh, ways that video games can be used to bring people to life. There's so many ways that we can we can like harmonize with the human experience to produce something that's that's really deep and really uh, and, and, and just helps us feel ourselves in a way that is just so much more present and so much more um, like gosh I don't even have the words for it you know I think the standard use of video games is to distract us mm. or to entertain us um, and by entertain, I mean um, like um, 
help us not feel as much pain for the moment, numb us a little mm. bit. Um, but the, it's just a tool. It doesn't have to be used that way. It, yeah. can, it can absolutely be used to help you feel more real. And film can too, social film media. Film can too, social media yeah, can do, but God, things. social media has a long way to climb. A long way to climb, yeah, yeah. Yeah, interesting. So the, the identifying, <coughs> this is cool, identifying video games as a tool that can be used to do things like send a deep love ball into someone else's soul. Yeah, that's a really good way <laughs> of putting it. Sounds awesome. Yeah. Okay, so so um, now this, when are we thinking, in a couple months or so for Sound Self? Yeah, 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 before okay. the end of the year. Okay, so before the end of the year, um, and where can people um, stay up to date on what? Uh, you can check out our Facebook, um, which is, you just look up Sound Self on Facebook. Look up Sound Self on Facebook. On, on Instagram, if you follow Andromeda. Um, I think it's uh, Instagram is Enter Andromeda. Enter Andromeda on Instagram, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're on Twitter, which is at Sound Self, or, or I'm on Twitter as at Video Dreaming, though I don't tweet very much anymore. At Sound Self. At Sound Self, On yeah. Twitter, and you're Video <coughs> Dreaming. Okay, okay. So this is how people can keep in up to date with mm -hmm. where you guys are at. This sounds, I want to do the, uh, yeah. I want to do that, well, You right? can on Sunday. Yeah. Your, your listeners can't necessarily, maybe they can, but the, in a different context. But, but we're having a party on, on Sunday at the end of this that, mm -hmm. that I would love for you to attend and, mm -hmm. and get to try this experience. Thank you, thank you, nice. Yeah. Nice. So, okay, so now where are we heading with the leveraging the medium for these spiritual love balls? What are, how, yeah, yeah I so to say that. Yeah, teach us about what, how we're gonna use video game and music to do this in virtual reality. Mm -hmm. How we're going to use video games and music. It's, it's, so with any of these things, the tool is there. Um, I, I think this is true not only of any of the arts, but any, any place you have a skill or an expertise, if you redirect that skill or expertise towards mystery, then it suddenly becomes something sacred. Um, and I've been, as a, as a first time entrepreneur, I've been finding that to be the case with business. You know, that's hugely. But with video games, um, honestly, all it is is, is having a, um, a spiritual practice. And, and, and having your life be a spiritual practice. Um, and they, like I can't tell you like what the techniques are. I, I mean, I could, but I don't think that's really, then you'll just learn how to make something that is like, like really the, the truest thing always comes from inside and from inside ourselves. And, and um, there might be something to learn by studying my work, but, but I really think that, that the, the truest thing is it comes from having a relationship with reality that is um, devotional and having that be the totality of one's life. And if you're a video game designer, or if you're an artist, or if you're a musician, and that's the way you approach being alive, you'll channel. That's just what the creation process will be, will be a channeling process. And you won't always understand it. Um, in fact, the moment you understand it is, is the moment you, you lost the edge, which is fine. We need to do that to integrate, you know? We need to, to like channel for a little bit and then integrate, then channel, then integrate. That's, mm -hmm. that's right, like you can't be tripping all the time. Mm -hmm. And people who are beyond certain stages of enlightenment don't necessarily hold jobs very well. <coughs> but, but, but the point is if, you're, if you live in a devotional manner, your work will become devotional. It almost can't not, but it requires like so much bravery and the willingness just to, oh gosh, it's, it's, it's both easy and, and so difficult, mm -hmm. right? Um, and like you said, you have to do things like have the creative process be channeled through you and then find a way to, um, to take yourself from the edge, maybe do a little bit of integration of it back to the edge. This is a very delicate um, process of, of, of 
edge work plus integration. Shadow work, integration, surrender, um, everything. Uh, so I'll speak f t about, you know, speak about the artistic creation process, but for You think we're gonna experience all of this with video game music? With anything. Virtual reality, with, yeah. With absolutely anything that well, you have as a, as a practice. And then anything created from that place is going to is going to be a is going to aid other people on their journey as well. Like we listened to East Forest this morning, and that's music that is absolutely created from from a devotional practice, and it it helps you and it helps me mm -hmm. touch something deep in ourselves, and uh, and and then touch the places we have resistance to that depth. Mm -hmm. um, so. Yeah, that's that's just what I. It's it's like it, it's, as soon as as soon as your your labor and your creation becomes a devotional practice, it, it can't help but catch fire. It might not be in the way that you would your mind would want it to catch fire, but um, there's something that's trying to happen here, and we don't understand it. And um, mm. the push to the unboundless love, the push there that we're trying to understand. I don't know. Feels like. That's kind of what's happening, the push towards unity and that. that. That seems to be something that's happening, yeah. Yeah. But I'm not sure, I, I even think that, that whatever that, that which is trying to happen is, is you know, um, this is just what it looks like to me, is, is unity is an aspect of that, but so is our separateness. Yeah, totally. And so yeah. is. Correct. Yeah. So. It's an awakening in general, that maybe one can say that that's the, the Whatever the fuck it is, it's it's huge yeah. and it's powerful and 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 we can't control it and it's smarter than us and it's wiser than us and it's more real than us and it moves through us and it speaks through us and if we resist it, we suffer and if we surrender to it, we come to life with each other in a way that's un, that undescribable and if we if we bring our work into harmony with it. Then um, the meaning of work is different, and and the, the meaning of our output is 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 different, and um, um, we've gone a little. <laughs> this is fantastic. Oh my gosh, no, yeah. this is too good, though. It's <laughs> yeah. so good. Yeah, the meaning of our output is different. Our lives are like you, different. And you can, this could be true if you're a banker, you know, or an accountant, or a. Um, or a maid, or like it's not, in the arts it's very clear and very obvious because art that doesn't come from that place is ugly. Mm. Um, but, and, but, and you can make a living as a banker without coming from, you know what I mean? But this, is, this thing that I'm saying is true of any practice. Yeah, of any practice. So that, it's like if we walk away from our most divine actualized path if we don't let it channel through us yeah. um, then it can get sometimes um, ugly but now we could stay on that topic that topic so <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, how 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 do the um, how does Andromeda Entertainment then work with all of these indie creators that you were talking about earlier in order to help them with this um, push uh, towards that, towards that unity, towards whatever's coming through us um, in the video games, music. Sure. VR. I don't. I don't see. I don't. I don't think I can like creatively coach people. I think for that part, I have to find the people who are already making something that's really in alignment with this, and then then there's an, just an intuitive practice, an intuitive process of seeing like how do how do we want to work together? What's emerging around us that that. Um, that needs, like let's say you're an artist that I want to work with. I'm aware of, you know, this opportunity, this opportunity, this opportunity, this distribution model, this thing that's coming up a few years, because it's like, as, like it's my job to stay zoomed out. Yeah. And, and if you're an artist, it's your job to stay zoomed in. Mm. And <clears throat> so when we come together, and, and, and when we feel that alignment, then, um, well, well, practically speaking, there's funding, there's um, uh, distribution through, through mainstream outlets like Steam and the Oculus Store and so on, but the place I'm most excited about are these emerging places. Like I was, 
mentioned you do spas, cannabis lounges, psychedelic clinics, you know. How do any of these technologies fit into the, the awakening that's happening? You know, here, we're here at the Awaken Future Summit, which is about psychedelics. There's a lot of psychedelic therapists here. And any of these things that can be a tool for somebody's psychedelic awakening, I want to help make that happen. I mean, art is, is already, without labeling it as such, we already know that art has to play a role in psychedelic ceremony. This is why we have music, this is why we have like beautiful settings and so on. So, so what does high-tech art in that space do for, for the, the psychedelic um, phenomenon that's happening in America today? Um, so these are some of the spaces that I see emerging and, and for the moment it's very um, exploratory. Excuse me, explorative and experimental. You know? And you're staying zoomed out to and be able to watch how these are popping up and then and then connect this title in this yeah, way and this yeah. title in this way and these titles together in this way and how do we, you know. And you plug the indie artists through those channels and whatnot. Exactly. Okay, cool. Yeah. Cool. And the artists. But it's very early, it's very early like, days for this. I stuff. like how you also said that the artists that you work with they have to have their own actualization, their own artistic edge that they're yeah, they have to. having channeled through they them and to. that you can then work with them. Actually, I feel like that happens uh, a lot of the time now as we're seeing kind of a, a, a play between a, a mentor and a mentee. It's actually a really important phenomenon for us to continue uh, making a priority in our lives as a mentee-mentor phenomenon. Mm -hmm. So like one could uh, talk to you um, about what, uh, what they're passionate about, where they could see a fit, and then you could help. That whole process is so important. It, it, it catalyzes significant um, uh, success in life, the f phenomenon of well, Bloom Two Sigma and stuff. So, so okay, so now we have this, we have this uh, era of VR and, and um, psychedelics and meditation and, and it's pretty exciting, right? It's, it's pretty cool. It's a big part of the awakening, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. And, and we're the frogs in the frying pan, right? <laughs> Always we're the frogs in the frying pan. But like ten years ago, meditation was not mainstream. Meditation was weird. You couldn't talk about spiritual awakening without people thinking you were fucking crazy. What's it going to be like ten years from now? And what role do you have in that becoming? What What do you know? that if the world knew you knew, they would think you're fucking crazy. That 10 years from now, you'll know was so necessary for the integration. Mm -hmm. Sorry to interrupt. That's a huge part of what we also are very passionate about. Uh -huh. Trying to inspire other people to, to catch on, like what do you know now that in 10 years, people are gonna catch on to and mm -hmm. that and that'll be really important for the overall awakening and, and to try and manifest that not in 10 years but in six months or a year yeah, to try yeah. and manifest that. Because, because I think all of these things that we're doing, and I don't think we, we know here the connections that are necessary now, but like I'm working on this piece, you know, Adam Ghazali downstairs is working on this piece, and then somebody I don't know, I don't know what they're doing, is working on this piece, and someone's working on this piece, and they're all gonna come together in some way. And, and it's such a, it's such a you know, like I, I just have to surrender to that process yeah. and keep my eyes open and try to be as humble as possible. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, especially when we see young people that are smarter than we are. Oh my God, you know, they're yeah. so smart. Yeah. They're Some so of them smart. They're really smart. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, a couple thoughts that I think we should talk about um, on the way out. One is. Are we in a simulation? Oh yeah. Uh, are we in a simulation? Um, so this is a simulation podcast. I can I can give you a yes and I can give you a no, and I'm trying to decide which to give you. Or uh, both. Or both. Okay, so. God. Uh, <laughs> I mean, okay. Obviously, I mean, not obviously. Actually, this is not obvious, but for, for anyone who's done like their work in psychedelics and meditation and so on, like this is just, I, it seems, we seem to understand this, that, that that which we think is real and that which we think we are is not, it's just like, it's just, you know, the, the, the Buddhist idea of like ripples on the surface of the water. It's there, 
but it's not. It's it, it's an illusion, or it's a, it's just a piece of it, or it's the, um, it's it's. Uh, I mean, I mean, uh, I'm looking for the words. It's it's like. It, it's just not what it seems to be, you know, but. It's not purposeless, you know, and it's not em empty, and it's not. Oh, when I think of simul, okay, so so here's my no. As, like when I think of simulation, simulations are always simulating something. They're always like a a sort of um, a low poly representation of something that is more real, like a, a race car sim, is. Like the simulation of driving a race car. I don't think this is a simulation of anything. I think this is something crucially important and magical and special that's happening here through us um, that we don't understand. Um, but it's also not what it seems to be. Okay. And what is the most beautiful thing in the world? Oh. I have a, a step four year old, a stepson. He's sometimes so annoying um, and total dick. And that moment in me when my resistance to him gives way to something else, and I see the magic and I see the wisdom and and I respect him as a as a being who is just as alive and and tapped in or something, whatever, you know, just as blank as I am. And and that moment going from, fuck you, Jesus, to, oh, that, to me, that's the most beautiful thing in the world. And there's so much everywhere in our world where we see conflict is, um, is like the first side of that, you know? Thanks for asking. That's a good question. Mm. That's a really good question. It's a good answer to be able to to feel that and then be able to explain it, the transition that you feel in your feeling between yeah. those moments. Oh, yeah. 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 And when I think he's a dick, I'm not thinking about the, but I'm going to love him in a minute and see that, you know, see the beauty in this. I'm just yeah. thinking, you're a selfish little dick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's part of it. I think you know we, people talk a lot about like the the political divide right now, where everyone just thinks each other's like such a dick and missing the point. And I, I'm, it's like that's half the picture. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Robin, this has been a wonderful conversation. I've been enjoying it. Thank, Thank you. you so much for coming on the show and talking to us. Yeah, my pleasure. We're really looking forward to Sound Self. I want everyone to check out the links in the bio. Get checking. Get get that. Get. Get more conversations rolling around our friends, families, coworkers, people online on social media about what these things are like when we apply video games and music for transformation, VR for transformation. And check out the links below to Consciousness Hacking, also to Simulation. Support the artists, organizations, and entrepreneurs around the world that you believe in. And go and build the future, everyone. Manifest your dreams into the world. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you soon. And, and please, I've got one more. Yes. Please, please be in touch if whatever you're manifesting the future is, uh, if it's in the domain of what I've been speaking about, uh, maybe we can manifest together. That's right. All the info is below to Robin's work. Check it out. Much love. <laughs>